Restoration Church, welcome to worship today. We are a community of people seeking to help our community embrace the life-restoring grace of Jesus together. That our focal point is Jesus, and that's why we're gathered to worship here today. If you're new or would like to get more information or share information with us, the best, there are two good things that you can do. Well, three good things. If you're here, you can find me or somebody else and just tell us. The second thing is if you go on our website and you scroll down that there's a contact button. You can click that and get a form to submit information. That's if you're joining us online. Or if you text the word CONNECT to our uh, church management number, which is 804-362-0052, then you can, that will send you a prompt where you can share information you have for us. Our goal for all of this is so that if you would like information, you can get it. Or if you'd like to give information or prayer requests, you have a means to do that. Um, and we're going to take, take advantage of every means possible to help make that happen. As I mentioned, we are here to worship today. We are worshiping Jesus Christ. And this is what Jesus said about himself. He said that, that as the Son of Man, he did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. That he didn't serve because he lacked power or he lacked authority or he lacked ability. He served because he had all those things, but was committed to show his love and his glory. As we're here to worship him, to magnify, to both to praise him for all the things that he did and is doing, but also to say as people, we want to be like him. And just as Jesus came not to be served, but to serve, that we want to be people who give our lives in service to him and others. So let's wor worship God together. Please stand. Stop 
your heart. 
and you can grab a seat and you can get comfortable if you want. Uh, this is not the offering bucket, but I do want to talk about this bucket uh, as we continue our worship together. The Christian life is depicted as one in which God gives us abundant grace, and because of that overflow of the grace he gives us, it flows out into the lives of others. And so we have a time of offering where we offer back to God, not because we have to earn his favor or because he needs what he's given us, he's got all of it, but as a demonstration that we trust him. We say, it is yours. And we're going to talk about this bucket in a second, but um, as we come to our offering, if you, um, so there are different ways to give financially to Restoration Church. Uh, I know many folks um, give um, an automated way. If you want to give one time or want to give in a way that avoids any banking fees, one of the ways you can do that is through Venmo. And so if you have a Venmo account, you can find a restoration-church-1, um, and then you can give uh, that way. That's a, uh, that, that is our virtual offering bucket of sorts. Uh, but I wanted to, so I asked you to get comfortable because I wanted to talk a little bit about some of our new space stuff. Um, so this, there's a lot going on right now. So this week is when carpet is going in. Um, so the place is going to look radically different when carpet goes in. Um, but once carpet goes in, it's on as far as all the other stuff that happens to get us down the road. So I'm going to give a, a good bit of information here, and then I'm also going to invite some other folks up um, to who we're going to talk about something specific. So the information is this. Because carpet is going in, that means we're getting close. We are getting close to being there. So next Saturday, July 3rd, will be our last Saturday here. Um, so MCC has been an amazing short-term home for us, uh, a gift that we couldn't have planned for or figured out ourselves, but which we graciously received, and it's been a joy. But next Saturday will be our last Saturday here. From then on, we will be Sundays. So on July 11th, the, we will be in the parking lot, at the space, worshiping there, and then hopefully the week after, again, we don't have permits yet, we're waiting on those and a few other, but hopefully the week after that we're inside, in the building, worshiping together Sunday morning. So that, that's kind of where we're going. But obviously between here and there is a bit. Um, so one of the things I mentioned a couple weeks ago is that when we have needs to move stuff, because, oh yeah, we got lots of stuff, um, that I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you quickly and say, hey, Let's do this. So I'm actually going to give you a week lead time now, which is a lot. So next Saturday morning, about 9 or 9.30, that the, our tech team, who has done an enormous amount of stuff for our church, is asking us to do a small thing for them to help them move gear from, um, from uh, a basement and a storage shed where we're going to be, or not storage shed, but a storage unit, that we need to move into our new space. That's going to probably be two to three hours, Saturday morning, July 3rd. Contact or get in touch with Chris Arvin, who is here, or Matt Nixon, and they can set you up with all the details. And, you know, you, can, you don't have to be strong to carry some cords. I mean, you can carry a huge box if you want, but it's just people who can help move the stuff in a neat way and get it in the space. So that's happening July 3rd. The other thing I wanted to say about this space, because we're going to have, there's going to be more moving stuff coming up, but with all of this stuff that's moving, that's everything that's, that's going on, when we get in there, that there's going to be stuff that just doesn't quite work right. Like, stuff's going to happen. A water main is going to break, hopefully not. The AC could go out, that we could have kind of uh, some guests were unexpected in a good or bad way show up on, on Sunday mornings. There, there's just, there's so much stuff that we cannot plan for. So, what I'm asking all of us to do, in the words of Dick Class, is to bring your bucket of grace with you. Bring your bucket of grace to have graceful expectations for everything, but even more, to have a bucket of grace to pour on different things. Oh, someone needs to clean the toilet and we don't have anybody to do it? Could, would you consider just once? Or we need help moving all of this stuff? Could you, in any way possible, let us bring our buckets of grace? Um, maybe your bucket isn't, you know, is like this, but however your bucket is, bring your bucket of grace with you because we need it. The other, the other way that I would like us to bring our buckets of grace of offering ourselves in our church is we are setting up a welcome team. So we want people, when they visit us, 
um, especially come September, because the time between in July and August is going to be kind of a softer opening where we're figuring a lot of stuff out. But we want to set up a welcome team so that when people arrive, especially if it's their first time with us, and especially, especially if it's their first time ever or in a long time being in a church building, that we want them to have an amazing first 10 minutes and last 10 minutes. We want to help their experience be as rich as possible. We don't want to miss that moment. If God is entrusting us with people who don't know him or feel far from him, we want to do everything we can to help them connect with him and not get in the way. So one of the ways we're doing that is is by setting up a welcome team. Now the welcome team is going to help sort of think for and plan for the first 10 minutes and last 10 minutes of anybody's experience in our space. And so some of the values, I'm going to tell you about this welcome team, but some of the values is we want people and each of the teams to be fully present, like to not just be there running around or not sure what to do, but really to be fully present so you can engage people eye to eye and say, you matter and I want to help you. We want them to be fully present. We want them to um, be able to uh, show kindness and hospitality in tangible ways to other people. Um, So what what it's going to look like is that there will be people in the parking lot who, when, when people arrive, they'll say, oh, there's something going on here. Someone's helping me know where to go. There'll be people at the door who are holding the door open and giving a warm greeting for you when you come in. There will be a hospitality table so that with, with coffee and maybe eventually snacks so that you feel at home. There'll be a welcome center with specific information and people who can answer questions if you have any of those things. And the best part of all is there'll be a team of ushers who are like the center fielders or free safeties who are helping to connect everybody with where they want to go. Whether it's someone who you want to connect to a relationship or take to children's ministry or help find a seat, that the ushers are there helping to organize all of it. So right now I'm going to invite the team leaders up so you can know them because we're looking to build these teams, um, to build uh, enough teams so that there can be people so you can serve once every three weeks um, and and commit to this team. So that so that rather than having a bunch of people scattered on different teams, of having a clear process of where you can serve so that people can then get connected. So um, the team members, uh, Bob Baker is going to be leading the parking team. Uh, Bob isn't, isn't one of these people, if you know Bob. Uh, but Bob's going to be leading the parking team. So you want to get in touch with Bob, uh, find him. There'll be six people on that team. Uh, Lee McGraw is, re- is leading the greeting team at the door. So they're going to be looking for six people on that team who can hold doors open, smile, and just be like Lee does. Uh, so no pressure. Be like Lee. Yeah, that's, that's the message of today. Be like Lee. Uh, so that also we're looking for the, uh, the Welcome Center team that George Walker is leading, of uh, elders and deacons who can have the information to pass on to people. Uh, Lucy Trott is leading the hospitality team of helping to make sure that we have the right kinds of things to share with people so that it's a warm, satisfying environment. You, you can, this could be a place if you just want to say, I kind of want to be in the kitchen and make stuff and I don't have to like, interact with people that much. Uh, that would be the team to be on. And if you just love food stuff and bake, anyway. And then Lynn Kyler will be leading the usher team. And like I said, the usher team may be the most important team we have because typically you think of ushers at a church, oh, they're the people who are doing this, right? That's not what we envision the usher team being. Rather than ushering stuff, you are ushering people. And so rather than passing a plate, you are passing relationships, and you're helping to connect people wherever they're going to go. And we need nine people for that team. Anyway, so these are the team leaders. Uh, You can find them here. You can find their emails online uh, on the website. It's going to be up in in a couple of days. And then you can also find information and restoration for the week. So this is, these are, these folks represent the welcome team and want us to be able to be fully present to all of us when we show up, but also to guests. So Thank you all so much. Y'all can go back and grab a seat. Uh, In light of all of this stuff, what shapes how we think about it? Um, Jesus gives us a prayer that does. He gives us the Lord's Prayer, which talks about wanting His kingdom come and His will be done, because that's what this is about. This isn't about being an efficient organization or having a certain quota of people who are... This is about Jesus' kingdom. We wanted to see it go forward. So I invite you to stand up, and we're going to close this time of offering by saying the Lord's Prayer together. The words should be on the screen. At least the restoration, restoration version of the words will be up. If you know it in a different version, feel free. So let's pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, let's keep worshiping together and uh, kids can be dismissed to the children's time.
One more time, just the voices. worship, this message, everything, God. It just means absolutely nothing if your spirit is not in it, Jesus. So right now, God, we just usher you in, God. We usher you into this room, God. We pray that your spirit would be over every single person in this room and that you would be the foundation. You would be the priority for every single person. And we pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys may be seated. I would say that we are blessed to have Judah and all the folks on this worship team. Do I get any amens there? In restoration, could you imagine going through a transition like this without Bill Moore? Huh? Do y'all realize? I mean, good grief. Pure gold. Uh, Bill and, and Kristen, wow. Um, Bill, thank you for everything. Wow, fantastic. So, And how about MCC um, having us here? Isn't that, uh, that's just, just incredible. So, okay, uh, I am glad to be here after the fire last night in my... Uh, um, grilling, uh, wow, and uh, uh, burned a little bit of hair off here. Some of it's still a little bit red. I'm glad to get a little color back, actually, but um, I wasn't wasn't planning wasn't planning like that. I want to give you a context for um, tonight's message: um, Good Friday forgiveness. This is the fourth congregation and the fourth time I've preached this message. I've only preached a message twice before. So um, this, um, this has really touched my heart, and I hope that it uh, touches yours. Um, I was still teaching at St. Giles uh, through Palm Sunday weekend, and that Palm Sunday Saturday was our first uh, time here. So I didn't have time to do the readings that y'all were doing for Lent in Luke's Gospel, if you remember. So in Holy Week, I was doing, I was playing catch up and reading all uh, 24 chapters of Luke um, on, uh, in, in, during Holy Week. And Good Friday, I got to the to the lesson that I'm sharing with you and have shared with the other congregations um, since, um, since Memorial Day. No, since the Sunday after April, uh, Sunday after April. Let me try that again. The Sunday after Easter in April, which I think was the 11th. I'm not positive. Um, so... I'm going to say Bill because he's here. We can blame this one on Bill, but probably Jeff and Bill colluded on this uh, 
reading of, of Luke in, uh, during Lent and coming into Easter. And uh, I just couldn't get past what, uh, what I'm going to share with you. I think I've talked to you uh, before about the Passion Bible that was given to me about a year and a half ago. And I just absolutely uh, love it because each page uh, has about half a page of scripture and half a page of, uh, of footnotes. And those footnotes take you back to the original languages, to Greek, to Aramaic, um, and, uh, and even, to, uh, even to Hebrew. And the passage that we're going to look at got me excited about grammar, about Greek grammar, and studying verb tenses. And I can see everybody getting on the edge of your seats because you just can't wait for another lesson on uh, verb tenses. In Greek, in Hebrew, uh, no less, uh, not simply uh, English. So um, you might think, okay, what's the deal? Well, the deal is this. If you really want to understand God's word, uh, you need to understand verb tenses for understanding, for meaning, and as you will see tonight, uh, application of God's word uh, to our lives. And while I'm thinking about it, um, if you have your Bible, I would encourage you to open it up to the 23rd chapter of Luke's gospel. If you don't have your Bible, I would encourage you to bring it next week uh, and every week um, because it's one thing to see it on the screen. There's another thing to, to be looking at it, and you may use your, your cell phones for, for your Bible now, and I understand that. Uh, the scripture tonight is uh, verse 34, um, and it goes like this. Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Are we familiar with that? Oh, yeah. So, Lord, uh, uh, may... May we present our hearts to you. We have sung and prayed for your Holy Spirit to fall upon us, to fill this room, this atmosphere, fill our lives. And Lord, may we hear your word as it uh, is speaking to each of us. For we make our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So, look, you're going to have to concentrate. You're going to have to pay attention. You're going to have to hang with me because we're going to get, we're going to actually get somewhere, okay? The English translations basically said what we just rehearsed. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. But the Greek actually says, Jesus was saying Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. To be honest, I don't know why the English translations um, translate it, Jesus said. Because the Greek actually says, Jesus was saying. All right, hang with me. In Hebrew, there are only two tenses, two primary tenses. The perfect and the imperfect. The perfect tense deals with um, past action. It's over. It's done. It's back there. It's past tense. The imperfect is uh, incompleted or uncompleted action. Now, we have two tenses for that, the present and the future. Now, when the Hebrew Bible is translated into Greek, 
uh, which they had to do because the Hebrews lost their language. Alexander the Great conquered the world, and he used the Greek language, Greek culture, to try to unite his empire. Um, the, uh, the Jewish scholars had real challenge on their hands as to how to translate the two tenses of Hebrew into the three tenses of Greek, which are like ours, past, present, and future. But even there, there were problems because of the nuances of the uh, present tense in Greek. Uh, it has a, a connotation usually of ongoing action or continuing action. So that brings us to this place right here in the, verse 34. Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It's an indication of repetition. When we look at this, when we see this, we think, okay, Jesus said it one time. And if you have chapter 23 open, he said it one time uh, in regards to the soldiers beneath him on the, while he hung on the cross, and they're dividing up his clothes. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. But it's repetitious action that is being referred to so what I think is that what Jesus was saying is almost like a refrain that could cover much of Good Friday much of what was going on around Jesus and beneath Jesus as he was being crucified if you're looking at chapter 23 People were watching him. And the leaders were sneering at him and ridiculing him. And the soldiers were mocking him. And Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Pontius Pilate had this so-called quasi-trial of Jesus and he comes out and he says, basically, I, I don't find the wrong in this man to justify crucifixion. I'm going to release to you a prisoner. Do you want me to release Jesus? And the crowd shouts, crucify him, crucify him. And Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Jesus is not crucified alone. There is a prisoner on the left and there is a prisoner on the right and one of them hurls insults at Jesus. If you're the Savior, basically, save yourself and save us. He saved others, but he can't save himself. And the other, on the other side, basically told the first one, shut up. We deserve what we're getting, but not this man. And Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And don't you think that what happened the night before is still on Jesus' mind? He's thinking about what happened the previous night. Remember? Peter says, I will never deny you. Jesus says, before the cock crows three times, or before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Father, forgive him. He knows not what he's doing. And then there were the rest of them, the other disciples, that same night. And Mark tells us that not just Peter denies him but all of them all of them desert him all of them leave uh, Jesus they run away in the garden of Gethsemane father forgive them they know not what they do and don't forget something else happened that night 
It's what we term the Last Supper. Paul tells us about it. We use those words of institution for the most part from 1 Corinthians 11. On the night in which he was betrayed go those words of institution. And, and when I was remembering that, it just reverberated, betrayed, betrayed, betrayed. On the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord took bread and he blessed it. He broke it. He gave thanks. And he said, this is my body broken for you. And after the supper, he takes the cup. And he says, this is the cup of the new covenant. And in my blood, it's shed for you and for many. Drink it all of you for the forgiveness of your sins. And don't you think probably going through Jesus' mind on that night, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And don't forget that time when a brother, it says a brother, a member of the church, a fellow Christian, says, okay, Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive a brother who sins against me? Is seven enough? He was proud of that because the normal number would be three. And Jesus said, you better work on your arithmetic a little bit. Not seven times, but 70 times seven. Father, forgive them. And, and what do you think? What do you think? How does this apply to you and me? Does Jesus want us to forgive like he did? Does Jesus want us to pray like he did? And didn't he teach us to pray? And didn't we just pray it? Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our sins. As we have forgiven those who have sinned against us, according to Matthew's gospel, according to Luke's gospel, forgive us as we continue to forgive. And didn't he say, what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. How are you going to apply this? How are you going to apply? Is this the word of God? How are we going to apply? How do you apply Jesus' Good Friday refrain to forgive, to forgive, to forgive, to forgive, not just in the church. What about in our families? What about where we work? Do we say this? Do we think this? Do we want to think this? Do we want to pray? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Or forgive him or forgive her. He or she doesn't know what they're doing. How does the prayer apply in our context? Where we live, who we connect with, the problems that we have in life for those who failed us, frustrated us, disappointed us, even betrayed us, whether it's a husband or a wife, or a child, or a parent, or a friend, or a foe, or a politician in the other party, or a politician in your own. How does this prayer apply to you or to me? And if not in any of the above 
situations that, or relationships that I was talking about. Let me share this with you. Diane and I were watching our favorite TV series of all time. Now, Blue Bloods is number two, okay? Number one, I know Denise and Lee know what I'm going to say. The Waltons, baby. The Waltons, the best of all time. Uh, we've only watched them every episode probably three times, but we're, we're, still, we're still getting there. In this particular episode, the farmhouse has burned. Not quite burned down, not burned completely, but it's burned significantly, so much so that the children have to be divided up and one, I think, has to go to the, the uh, Baldwin sisters and one to the Godsees down at Godsees store and one to somebody else and one somebody else. And they're working, trying to fix the house up, and it's, it's taken a while. Well, in this episode, I think Grandfather Zeb and his grandson, John Boy, are sitting on the front steps of the house or they're out at the barn or somewhere. Uh, and John Boy is filled with guilt because John Boy has just started smoking a pipe so that he can appear sophisticated to his Boatwright University classmates. Here's a guy from the sticks in the middle of nowhere and he doesn't want people looking down on him. So he's just started smoking a pipe. And you know what? John Boy can't remember whether he put the pipe out before he went to sleep. Now Zeb, Zeb is feeling guilty too because Grandfather Zebulon was cold that night and he plugged in an electric heater. And he can't remember if he unplugged it. But now Zeb, he's uh, got a lot of wisdom. What an old guy. He's at least as old as, I reckon, me at that point. But at any rate, he was dealing with it better. And John Boy wasn't. And Zeb says, okay, John Boy, suppose it was you. Suppose you didn't put the pipe out. Uh, did you mean to do it? Did you intend to burn our house down? Did you want for all the children to have to be divided up? Did you mean to put every single one of us in danger? And John Boy says, Grandpa, you know not. You know I didn't mean to. And Zeb's saying, well, you know what your problem is, John boy? You're having trouble forgiving yourself. Ever been there? Huh? I have. I am just about every day. Father, forgive him. Forgive her, forgive them, forgive me. I didn't mean to. I really didn't understand the consequences. Father, forgive, forgive, forgive. Good Friday forgiveness again and again, and again. So Lord, may we take this as your word. May we hear it way deep within us. May we hear you speaking to us. May we hear Jesus praying for us on the cross that good Friday. And Lord, may we be people who want, who desire 
to forgive, to share love that forgives over and over and over again. And God's people who are in agreement will say, What a good word. Would you guys stand up with us and worship a little bit more? Let's sing about the goodness of God, even though we don't deserve it. He still forgives us every single time. And he is the perfect example of what it means to live a life full of forgiveness and grace. Um, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, just always bringing that bucket of grace around. Always bringing that with us and putting it over every single person and every single thing. That's just a perfect example. So let's just sing about the goodness of what it means to serve a God who's always forgiving. Amen. goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so Of the goodness of God, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire, and in darkest nights, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend. In the goodness of God All my life
will sing of the goodness of God. Can we give it up for them again? Because that was awesome. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Uh, I just have three really quick announcements, and then Tommy is going to come back up. But speaking of all the excitement of the new uh, that's coming in the building, uh, community is still really important. And so we have activities for everybody uh, this summer. First is going to be the youth one. <laughs> Yep, the youth one, the youth one, the men's one, the women's one. I'm going to trust you guys. First one is going to, the River Day. Youth, we're going uh, to July 8th down to Johnny Davis's River House. We still have some spots left. Uh, it's going to be awesome. And then uh, the next event with everyone uh, for, for youth is going to be a Flying Squirrels Night. We're going to go July 29th. Uh, and we're all going to go to a Flying Squirrels game, which is going to be awesome. Um, the next thing, which will segue to that, is the men's group uh, is going to go to a Squirrels game. And I don't have it in front of me, so Bill is going to scream the date. Tuesday. Tuesday! It's Tuesday! It is Tuesday. So, men's Flying Squirrels Tuesday. It's going to be awesome. And then the women's group is having coffee on July 10th, uh, two Saturdays from now at Panera. And so, uh, women, we would love for you guys to go to that and have another place of community there. Tommy, come on up. So, uh, Chris, the Squirrels game is this Tuesday, June 29th, not July 29th. My, the youth one is July 29th. Oh, the youth but one. But the men's one is this Tuesday, which apparently is the 29th. I don't know my dates, but yeah. it sounds like they're both on the 29th. That's right. That's what it sounds like. Nice. Hey, um, be a long benediction, okay? But you help me. Help me. May you ever have, come on now. May you ever have eyes through whom Christ can see. May you ever have ears through whom Christ can hear. May you ever have a mind through whom Christ can think. May you ever have hearts through whom Christ can love. May you always have feet through whom Christ can go. And may you ever have hands through whom Christ can help. Now, you go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. He's put you there for a purpose. The Christ who dwells in you wants to accomplish something in you, through you, for you, and for others, wherever you go, whatever you do. And if you leave here believing this, you will go in faith, you will go in hope, you will go in love, you will go in peace. Because Christ, goes in you Christ goes with you you will go giving and you'll go receiving you'll go forgiving and you'll go being forgiven and God's people who seek to go this way will say amen, amen. God bless you hope to see you next Saturday <laughs>